Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seam Lund and in this video we're gonna talk about this new study that compared eating one meal a day with three meals a day and it was a pretty good study. They actually had similar calorie intake and they controlled a lot of the variables. So we're gonna be going through this uh, study published in January 2022. I'm gonna give you my own thoughts about it and some additional input. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. So here's the study, January 11, 2022, uh, differential effects of one meal per day in the evening on metabolic health and physical performance in lean individuals. So that's a good thing that it was in uh, Norway, done in Norway, and uh, they actually had people who are in good health, so to say, that they're not obese, and uh, they're not like uh, in metabolic syndrome, those kind of things, so it would be like a pretty... You know, it would apply to, let's say, uh, a person who is already taking care of their health and uh, who is having some good metabolic health at the same time. With your fucking 48% body fat. So the study, they put, uh, they had a similar calorie intake. Uh, they didn't like, it wasn't like a metabolic ward study that uh, they would be fed the exact same calories, but they did use uh, food apps or food counting apps that uh, looked at how many calories there uh, consuming obviously people are bad at self-reporting and they can uh, underestimate or overestimate the calorie intake uh, but regardless it was at least um, at least they had uh, similar calories uh, allocated calories uh, you caloric uh, feeding uh, provided by a single meal with a 22 hour fast and two hour eating window versus three meals per day in a randomized crossover study and it took uh, 13 par participants which um, 11 completed a study five males six females their age was 31 plus and minus 1.7 years uh, their uh, bmi was 24 so they weren't obese they were lean uh, participants consumed all the calories needed for stable weight in either three meals or one meal per day between uh, 17 and 19 for 11 days per study period so it's not like a super long uh, study but 11 days is still uh, pretty good to see some differences or results they also used dexa scan to assess the um, basically results and uh, the body compositions and uh, these are the differences so uh, three meals a day lost 0 0.5 kilograms plus or minus uh, 0 0.3 and one meal a day lost 1.4 uh, kilograms plus or minus 0 0.3 so obviously one almost one kilo more uh, lost in the one meal a day group but the difference is that um, the one meal a day group also lost a bit more uh, lean mass and fat free mass uh, so uh, they did lose more weight in total but a lot of it or half of that even was uh, basically lean mass and half of it was fat mass whereas the three meals a day group they lost significantly less fat mass only like 0 0.1 kilograms uh, but they also lost a bit less uh, lean mass so uh, they lost half as little uh, lean mass as the one meal a day group but they lost you know almost like six or seven times less uh, fat mass as well so yeah the one meal a day group may make you lose more weight and it may make you burn lose more fat as well but it also has like a higher cost of lean mass uh, reduction which has been found in other similar um, comparison studies as well so that the intermittent fasting groups tend to lose more fat mass but they also make you lose a bit more uh, lean mass obviously there's ways to mitigate that uh, you can like increase your protein intake you have a higher protein intake if you have a higher calorie intake if you are in a calorie surplus then you're probably not going to lose uh, any muscle either on any of these diets me who have, have been also doing one meal a day uh, for five years uh, plus now and uh, even more uh, you can see that you know i've still gained muscle mass over the course of time i have lost muscle mass uh, this left picture is when i'm in the military 19 years old 68 kilos uh, doing a lot of like cardio exercise and I was eating three meals a day because of being in the military so to say uh, you had to eat breakfast lunch and dinner uh, so it was you know obviously I've still gained muscle regardless of eating one meal a day I eat much less frequently now but I've still gained significant almost like 15 kilograms of uh, muscle over the course of seven years so yeah obviously there is not the only thing that matters uh, but it's uh, something to remember that yeah you can still lose muscle if you're eating one meal a day, but you can prevent against that. <laughs> Moving on, respiratory energy expenditure, basically their metabolic rate and such, three meals a day, 1900, one meal a day, 1778. Uh, so their metabolic rate was also a bit lower on the one meal a day, which is a kind of a beneficial adaptation to a fasted state, because if you have a super high metabolic rate in the fasted state, then you're gonna just lose much bunch of muscle and uh, you know that's not ideal. So a slightly suspended metabolic rate 
in that scenario is beneficial. Obviously, it can be you know hard if you have low thyroid in the long run, but it didn't interfere with their weight loss. Even despite having a slightly lower resting energy expenditure, the one milliliter group still lost you know one kilo more of uh, weight and uh, double the yeah, or seven times more fat mass in the process. Uh, some of their blood work, triglycerides, three meals a day, 0 0.7, one meal a day, 0 0.6, uh, which is a bit lower. And the reason for that is because you're burning more fat, uh, triglycerides, fatty acid, uh, lipid molecules, you burn them for energy in the fastest state. Cholesterol, 4.2 uh, versus 4.5. So the cholesterol in the one meal a day group was a bit higher. And uh, the reason for that is uh, because of the slightly lower thyroid and lower energy expenditure that uh, does prevent the conversion of cholesterol into uh, the like sex hormones and stuff. So uh, the uh, thyroid hormones that tend to decrease a little bit in the fastest state, uh, those would naturally convert the cholesterol into testosterone and other things. But uh, because you are maybe like slightly lower on the metabolic rate and the thyroid output, then your uh, cholesterol levels may rise as a result of that, which is quite... Um, common like it's gonna happen in it's, it's seen in other studies as well HDL 1.6 1.6 in both which is good uh, LDL 2.4 and 2.8 so that's the uh, where it came from this uh, slightly elevated uh, cholesterol level uh, LDL it also comes from the just increased fat oxidation so that the lipid molecules or vehicles they transport both the triglycerides and LDL in the same uh, let's say vehicles in the bloodstream and uh, the reason why the LDL may rise is also because you're burning more fat uh, in the process, plus the cholesterol, um, oh, that's thyroid uh, association. Uh, triglyceride HDL ratio 0 0.5, 0 0.4, AST 2.24 versus 29, so the, a bit more higher elevated liver enzymes 28 versus 33. So not huge difference, but slightly elevated in the one meal a day. All right, all right, all right. They also used a continuous glucose monitor to look at the person, uh, person's like uh, glucose levels uh, daily all the time, 24-7. Uh, and uh, they found that, you know, followed the pretty similar uh, diurnal glucose uh, rhythm that uh, the glucose levels was lower in the mornings, etc. But um, as you can see, then uh, the one meal a day group had a lower glucose level basically all day un up, up until the point they ate. And uh, before they ate, their glucose levels was much lower than uh, the, uh, the three meals a day. And the three meals a day had higher levels of glucose in the later part of the day because of this, obviously, your insulin sensitivity decreases during the daytime, but also just eating meals just compounds that effect to a certain extent. And, um, you know, whether or not it matters, not hard. it's hard to tell. Like, if you have maybe some insulin resistance or diabetes, then it may be better to kind of suppress the blood sugar levels for a bit longer. Uh, but I wouldn't say, like, you know, even if you do spike your blood sugar levels, let's say, three times a day or two times a day with a regular eating pattern, then it as long as you become you don't become obese or as long as you don't become diabetic then it shouldn't have like any real long-term consequences on your health i personally do prefer like a more low blood glucose state and a more ketosis uh, at least the majority of the day that you would be in some ketosis for the other health benefits and anti-inflammatory benefits but uh, i don't think that it's the biggest let's say determinant of your overall health and longevity diabetes Let's look at the physical activity or exercise. So how much time did they spend being sedentary? Three meals a day for 480 minutes, one meal a day, 486 minutes. Uh, they basically did the same amount of exercise. Uh, their VO2 max in the three meals a day group was a little bit higher than the one meal a day group, uh, 3,400 versus 3,359. Uh, I mean, it's a very small difference. It's not huge, but if you're a competitive athlete, then obviously you need to eat more often and three meals a day is the better option for you. Uh, perceived exhaustion on the Borg scale, 19 versus 19. Uh, so that uh, means that, you know, they didn't feel tired uh, despite eating one meal a day and they felt the same uh, level of exhaustion during exercise. A lactate, three meals a day, 10.3 versus 8.9 in the one meal a day and uh, lactate, I mean lactic acid, that does impair physical performance. It's also not good for overall longevity. You don't wanna have high levels of lactate all the time. Potentially one of the reasons why the lactate was higher could have been also because of their higher intensity of exercise. So that because they exercised harder, higher VO2 max, 
they probably that could have ri- ri- risen the uh, lactate, but also maybe because of just eating more uh, food. As you can see, the three meals a day group does have a little bit of higher maximal isokinetic strength or isometric uh, strength, and uh, the one meal a day does have a little bit less strength, although it's not a huge difference. Uh, I personally do think that, uh, yeah, you probably won't be able to maximize your strength with one meal a day. You can maybe reach 90% of it, uh, but there is going to be this short drop off. Um, that uh, you do experience and if you want to fully maximize your performance uh, become an athlete uh, competitive competition competitor uh, then you would need benefit from a higher let's say food intake uh, for more frequent food intake and three meals a day is you know plenty uh, for that of course there are some ways to mitigate that there's um, you know ways to prevent this drop off from happening like what i've done i haven't eaten one meal a day per se i've eaten one and a half meals, as I've said in many of my videos, which basically means that I eat one meal a day, but during my workout or immediately before that, I have like a protein shake with essential amino acids, creatine, uh, dextrose, uh, and some other things, compounds in there that uh, help to boost my performance during the exercise. And I'm still fasting for like 20 hours every day, but I consume my calories in a small window. And technically I'm one meal a day, but because of the small boost of protein and amino acids, I'm still able to build muscle and uh, get away with it. Uh, I've tried also eating one meal a day without the protein shake and yes in that case i do lose more muscle mass or it becomes a bit smaller in frame because of not being able to exercise that much and because of not stimulating protein synthesis that often whereas with a protein shake i'm able to overcome that and that's kind of been my secret <laughs> over the past up to yeah six seven uh, years i've been doing something like that already What's up? in conclusion i think that it was a pretty well done study uh, obviously they didn't have specifically exact calories or you we don't know what the exact calories were because they used like a food tracking app they didn't actually be in a metabolic ward and weigh all the food how, how much they ate etc but it's uh, as close a good or as good as you can get in the real world scenario if you want to know what i do and how i do it then check out my other videos about it and my book metabolic autology but other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.